Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Unify Network application on Portainer. I got a comment on a Unify Controller video that I created to install Unify Controller on Portainer. And uh, thank you to this viewer that let me know that the image is being deprecated uh, uh, in 2024. So uh, this video is to update it and get you on the new Unify Network application uh, image on Linux server. So, a little bit about the series I'm going over home labs or installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse. So, go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So, let's get back to your registered programming. So I made a video on installing Unify Controller, th this one uh, by Linux Server on Portainer. But um, if you scroll down on this, it says this image will be deprecated and it will no longer be updated and please m migrate to Un Unify Network application image instead. So I'm going to be showing you how to install Unify Network application on Portainer. So now Unify Network application I will be taking over uh, from the Unify Controller image. So I'm going to show you how to install that one and 8664 and ARM64 and it does not support ARM HF. The, the application setup is, is IP and 8443 and the container now requires an external MongoDB uh, a database instance and I'll show you how to do that. And um, so this makes it to where you can manage your unified network uh, uh, devices. So um, now we'll, we'll get to explaining uh, the Docker Compose and everything. So we're on Big Bear Video Assets. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. And um, I'm going to scroll all the way down to how to install a unified network application on Portainer right here. And then I'm going to go in the Docker Compose. So a uh, version 2.1 of Docker Compose is being used. The services and then the service underneath the service is called Un Un Unify DB. The image is Mongo and it's coming off Docker Hub because there's no URL before this and it's 6011 for the version. Cont container name is going to be called Un Unify DB. It's going to set some volumes. So data, app data, Unify network application, DB data. This is on the host side. And this is on the container side, data, a, D, a DB. So left is host and right is container. Data, app data, Unify Network application, D, a DB init, mongo.js. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to get that set up as well. So, and then do, Docker entry point init, a DB dot DD, uh, init, mongo.js. And then it's read only. Um, so we will need to create this uh, file, and I've made a script for that. Uh, so we'll create that file before we start up our Docker Compose. And then now the port is 27017, so that's on the host side, and on the container side is the same port. And now restart unless stopped, so that means that if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart, but if it fails or any other reason, then it will try to restart. So I'm going to set another service underneath the services, and that's called Unified Network Application. And then the image is coming off Linux server, and then uh, it's using the latest tag. Container name is ca called Unified Network Application. It's going to set some environment variables. So it's going to hook into the Mongo DB. It's going to set me memory limit, me memory startup and Mongo TLS, and then all source. And then the user ID and the group ID is a thousand and thousand. And then the time zone, set that to your time zone. It's gonna set a volume down here. So data, app data, unified network application and config. This is on the host side, and this is on the container side, which is config. The ports are, uh, got comments by them to explain them. But the main port we'll be using is 8443 for the HTTPS portal right here. 
And then the restart unless stopped. So that means that if you stop it for no reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails or any other reason, then it will try to restart. And then we're going to say that this container right here, the Unified Network Application, depends on the Unified DB because it does. Um, so that's a little bit about the Docker Compose. So we're in the Big Bear Video Assets. Like I said, there'll be a link down in the YouTube description. And, and, and we're in how to install Unified Network Application on Portainer. And I'm going to go to initmongo.js uh, right here. And then oh, what this is doing it, is it's going into the uh, da a database. And if it doesn't exist already, it's going to create one when the uh, a user is created. So what this is doing is it's creating the user down here. So we're going to be generating this in the script that I created, uh, and we're go going to go over to Big Bear Scripts now. So now I'm on Big Bear Scripts, and there will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. I'm going to scroll down to uh, generate Unified Network Application in it Mo Mongo. And then now this is the script we'll be running. I'm going to go in the run.sh. So it's going to ask the user what the desired uh, config location is, and if the user wants to input it, they can, but it's going to be defaulted to this if the user does not input anything. If the user d uh, doesn't provide a location, like I said, it's going to be defaulted. And check if the config file already exists. And this is uh, making sure that the config file already exists. And if it does, then we're, we're going to ask the user, do you want to replace it? Um... So, and then it's going to come down here and create the directory and if it, and its parents, if it doesn't exist. So that means that if this path that the user inputs, uh, or, or goes with a default that does not exist, it's going to create it. And then it's going to come down here and download the file from the Big Bear Video Assets, the one that, that I explained. And then if for some reason an error happens, uh, because they can, we're going to just uh, output right here, error downloading the file, check your internet connection or a URL, and then we're going to exit with one. And then if everything's succeeded, we're going to say config save to this location. So we're going to go backwards. So we're going to copy this command right here, and then we're going to go over to our terminal inside of our portainer server, and we're going to run this. So now I'm going to run the script to generate the init mongo.js. I'm going to paste it in the, the, the command that we copied. And then I'm going to press return or enter. It's going to say, like I said, it's going to I want you to enter a location. Or if you don't, it's going to default to this one right here. I'm going to default it. And what it done is download the, uh, the config and saved it to this path right here. So we're going to start on Big Bear Video Assets. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. I'm going to scroll all the way down to how to install Unified Network Application on Portainer. And then I'm going to go in the Docker Compose right here. And then I'm going to go over here to Copy Raw File. And then when I do that, I'm going to go over to my Portainer now and get it installed. So I'm going to start on my Portainer. And then I'm going to go to Local. And then Stacks. And then add stack over here. And then all stack is as it runs Docker Compose underneath. So I'm going to name this stack Unify um, Stack. And then I'm going to scroll down to the web editor right here. I'm going to paste in the Docker Compose that I explained. And now I'm going to deploy down here, deploy the stack. And now it's successfully deployed, so we'll get to explaining the stack options. So now I'm going to go in the stack, and then you're on the stack right now. You can see the stack details. You can stop this stack, delete the stack, create template from the stack, and then stack duplication slash migration. You can go in the editor tab up here, and you can change your Docker Compose. And then you can come down here and update the stack. You can repull the image and redeploy. This is good if you have a latest tag that you want to update the cache from the registry and then redeploy the container. Uh, so, so you can toggle this on and off and then press update. You can scroll down and see the containers that are running right here. 
So Unified DB and the Unified Network application. So you can see the IP addresses, the published ports, th things like that, the image. And then you can see the access controls. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it and it greatly supports this channel and I very much appreciate it. So uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So let's get back to registered programming. So now in the containers down here, you can click on a container. You can see the container status. You can do start, stop, kill, restart, pause, resume, remove, recreate, duplicate slash edit. You can go in the logs and see uh, the logs for the container. This is great for debugging. You can inspect stats, console, attach. You can see the access controls, the create image down here. The container details of what the port configuration is, the image, the command, the entry point, the environment variables, the labels, the restart policy. You can change it here and then press update. You can also see the volumes that were created and the binds. Um, you can see the networks that it created. So it created a, uh, a default network a bridge. So, um, it's a little bit about the MongoDB side. So if you go back to containers, you can see that Unified Network application is here too. So you can go into it, see the same details, the same actions, the access control, the create image. You can see more port configurations that are different because this is a different container. You can see the image that's being used, the command, the entry point, the environment variables, the labels, and then you can see the restart policy, so you can change it, like I said, and then press update. You can see a bind, and you can see networks that were created down here. So bridge. So that's a little bit about the containers. So now if you SSH back into your server, you can um, see what we ran with the script. So you can copy this, and then you can just run an ls la. And then you can see that there is uh, a config and a DB in this uh, this file location. So data, app data, unified network application. So that's where your files will live. So um, you can go into it and you can see even more. So you can go into config. You can see data and the logs. You can go into it on the D a DB side. And you can see the init mongo.js right here and the data. So... That's where your files live. So now we're going to go to the UI. So the IP address for your portainer, 8443. And then I'm going to press return or enter. It's going to say the connection is not private because this is using a self-signed certificate. So I'm going to say advanced and then proceed. Now we can name our Unified Network a server right here. And you can uh, select your, uh, your country slash region. You can change your server name and then you can agree to the end user license agreement in terms of service. So I'm going to do that. You can also go in here and restore server from backup. So I'm going to go into next now. You can see that you can sign with your, your UI account. So I'm going to say advanced set, setup and then I'm going to skip. And then now I'm going to set a local access credentials. You can sign up for a UI account. So I'm going to put my password in and my email does not match. Okay, now we're good to go. So your username, your password, confirm password, and then your email. So I'm going to say finish down here. It's going to say setting up server. So we, we got it up and running, and you can see that the UI is really nice. You can see the access points. You can see it self-hosted, the server IP, which is your Docker, system uptime, the, the admin activity. You can go in and see your unified devices when you actually pair one or, or adopt one. You can see the system log, the updates, the admin activity, the client, the AP, the push notification settings. You can go into settings right here. And you can see more settings when you actually put some more devices on. Um, so an access point is required to uh, implement these configurations. 
You can go down the system and you can see the device name, the country, the language, the time zone, the time format, the theme, and site management, multi-site management, and you can export the site. You can come down here uh, over to the other tab called updates. Then you can check for updates. Then you can uh, get device firmwares when you actually have a, uni a unified device on the network. You can turn on early access, release channels, automate the device updates, device update schedule, and the device update cache. You can go over here to backups and you can uh, download a backup. You can, you can turn on auto backups and it's monthly. You can reschedule it to daily, weekly, monthly, on date, uh, the time, and the maximum number of files. You can set the backup retention. Um, you can go over to administration. You can turn on remote access. You will need a Ubiquity a single sign-on account. And then you can see the lo local accounts right here. You can go over to advanced and, and see more settings. So interface, you can cha change it from new to legacy. And then um, the, interface, the interface refresh rate, you can change this. A debug tools, data retention, the network time, email services, analytics, network discovery, you can change the inform host, the, SM, M, uh, the SNMP monitoring, device authentication, and you can change the SSH keys. You can add one. And then network support vial, and then lo logging levels, remote logging location, wi wireless connectivity, and connectivity monitor type. So that's a little bit about the Unified Network Application UI. So I just showed you step-by-step -step on getting Unified Network application uh, from Linux server running on Portainer. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or you need community support, you can go down to our forums and join the Big Bear community. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.